Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to show you guys how to run a Mac OS VM on our Linux distro. So let's get started. Now I've tested a couple of methods before and this is by far the easiest method to install and run Mac OS on our Linux distros. As far as the prerequisites goes, you need a newer generation Intel or a Ryzen CPU, anything that supports virtualization, a Linux distro that supports snap packages, and obviously RAM and storage and stuff like that. The more the better. So it's not going to be that crazy. Now I'm not a Mac user by trade. I've, I've installed Hackintoshes before, I've used it before, but as far as like all the little knickknacks and details, as far as like getting Apple ID to work or whatever, any of those like weird technical issues, I might not be able to help you solve. And I'm pretty sure you could Google the solution yourself, but as far as getting the hardware up and going and running the VM, that I could show you. Now I'm actually on my laptop, which is an i7 8th generation 8550U, and it has eight cores, 16 gigs of RAM and an NVMe of 256 gigabytes, which is not that large, but for testing purposes, it's gonna be great. A couple of things I did notice on the issue board, which I'll leave all the links down in the description below to his GitHub and everything, but a couple of things that I did notice um, people are having issues with is storage size, they want to expand it. And as far as USB pass-through, which I am gonna show you how to get that working too, so you could do FaceTime and everything. So jumping into my desktop right now, uh, this is Ubuntu 2010. And pretty stock, I've been using this on my laptop for a while right now. I do have a couple of games installed like Battle.net. Well, this is my normal laptop that I use for work. First thing we need to do is uh, pop over to our software center. And in here, all we have to search for is Sosumi. And that's it. Basically, you could install it through here. Now I'm gonna install that. Okay. Once everything is installed, you could actually launch it from here. And, or actually on from your menu over here. But there is a couple of things we do need to adjust before we could pop into installing it. So, okay, now that the base system finished installing and you're gonna see it's gonna pop up as the installer. Don't do anything here yet. What we need to do is actually close this out. So control alt G to escape the mouse grab. And I'm gonna close this out so we could do other settings to this. So popping into here, all right, we're gonna change our directory over to snap. All right, that's our home directory. And then we're gonna go into snap. In here, you should find a new folder called Sosumi. So we're gonna go into there. And in there, you're gonna find common. And there's a few files in there. Install, launch, and Mac OS cow, Q, Q -E -M -U cow, whatever you wanna call it. So now originally what they do is give you a 64 gigabyte uh, hard drive. So you could actually use that and that's all you get. The base install is about 10 to 15 gigabytes, which leaves you about like 45 to 50 gigabytes left over. So if you think that's enough space for you after installing Xcode and all this other stuff, that's fine. You could actually leave it like that. But if you want to expand it, you got to expand it now before you install the base system because it's a lot harder to expand it later on with F disk and everything. So what we're going to do is QEMU IMG resize Mac OS Q Cow 2 plus 20G. Okay, so that's I'm going to add 20 gigabytes to the hard drive already. Once you hit enter, it's going to resize the image. Now we're not done here because we still got to edit some of the settings. So we're going to go into nano launch. And in here, this is the setting file to boot up the QEMU into that environment. Now, one first thing we want to change is the memory. Originally, this snap package does not know how much RAM you have. It does not know how many cores you have. So it's gonna try to set it at minimum. So this way it doesn't crash your system. Two gigabytes is definitely not enough to run a Mac OS operating system. So I'm gonna up this to eight gigabytes since I have 16 total on my um, laptop. And as far as the core count goes, I'm actually gonna bump this up to six. Technically, you should be half of what your CPU is. So I have eight cores, I should use four but because I'm gonna be installing everything and uh, using it a little bit, I'm gonna be using six cores instead. Now we will revisit this config file if we're gonna be doing USB pass-through, but for now, we're just gonna leave that and let the installation go through. Control X to save, I mean to quit, save the buffer, yes, and we're gonna leave it as the same name launch. Now in here, you could either go back into running um, the icon over here, or we're gonna run it through the terminal so we could see the print out of what's going on. So give this a couple of seconds. 
and it's going to be the base installer hit enter now it's going to boot into the system and then in here we do have to do a couple of things which is format the hard drive and install the base system and then it'll reboot a couple of times on its own until the system is up and ready all right there we have it the system booted up and first thing we're going to pop into is this utility we're going to go over to the first one, which is Apple Virtual Block right here. And you see how it's 90 gigabytes because I added the 20. Then hit Erase. We're going to call this drive Mac OS Erase. Give it a couple of seconds. Done. Close out of this. Reinstall Mac OS. Continue. Continue. Now, if you plan on installing Big Slur, from the upgrade, I haven't tried it, but I don't think it's gonna work. Uh, you might, your mileage may vary if you wanna give it a try to upgrade to Big Slur after you install Catalina, but I haven't tried it myself. All right, so you would select the hard drive that you just formatted, which is this guy right over here, hit install. And total time of this whole installation, depending on your CPU and everything, is roughly between 25 minutes all the way up to 50 minutes. And I've done this both ways. When I was on two cores on this laptop, when I tested it, it took me about like 50 minutes. And now I'm on six cores, so I'm really not sure how long it's gonna take. Maybe half an hour, 20, 30 minutes. So I'm gonna let this run and let it do its thing, and I'll catch you guys after it's done. All right, so from at this point now, since it booted up again, we would have to finish up our little settings over here. So let's select our state. Uh, go through that, hit continue, don't transfer any information. Uh, I'm not gonna be signing in with my Apple ID, but I'm pretty sure you can. I would recommend setting up a brand new one just in case. So I'm gonna do set up later, skip, agree. Set up my username, continue, continue, continue. Uh, I'm gonna disable Siri. I like the dark theme. It's up to you, whatever, whatever you wanna choose. And there we have it guys. Uh, let's finish this setting. And we have ourselves a little Mac OS Catalina in our Linux PC. So if I was to go to about this Mac, we have our storage and it used about 16 gigs of installation. We have about 75 free and the RAM usage is low compared. It's supposed to be eight gigs. So I think something got changed between that because it's only showing two. So I'm gonna have to fix that again. And I'm also gonna show you guys how to pass through your webcam. So right now, if I go to FaceTime, um, nothing displays and there's nothing that I could display on here because it's not passing through anything like USBs or your phone whatever it is so let me shut this down because I know now that this boots up and runs and I'm gonna double check the settings again since we're still in the same folder which is snap Sosumi common I'm gonna go back into launch and Yeah, this got eight gigs, it's fine, okay. Now let's talk about pass-through while we have everything going on over here. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you guys could see what's going on. How's that? So what, the first thing you wanna do is figure out what you wanna pass through, okay? And I'm gonna do LS USB. Now I have a little camera interface which is my webcam on my laptop right now and it's this device over here, okay? And the next thing we need to know, if you want to pass through the actual USB port, you could do that as well. And that involves finding out what the bus is and also what the port is. So you could see my video driver thing is actually on port eight and the bus driver is on one. So it's bus one, port one, port eight. So you need to know these two because it's 1.8 if you're going to do the forwarding of the port itself this way you could plug anything into that exact port and you could forward your phone or anything that you have plugged in now my webcam doesn't work very well using the port thing so i can't do it on this instance but that's how you would do it if you were to forward your port 
Now, before we could do anything like this, a lot of people skip the fact that this is a snap package and you do need to enable permissions for snap. So to check out what we got over here, we would do snap and we would do interface and do Sosumi. Interfaces, interfaces within us. And you could see these are all the permissions that are allowed on the device and these are not. So what we do need to do is change and give it raw USB permission. And to do that, we would do sudo snap connect sosumi and then you get the colon at the end and you do raw USB. Type in your password and it's gonna to connect to raw USB. Now, if I was to go back to check the permission, snap interfaces Susumi, you would now see raw USB is allowed. This is step one of getting USB to pass through. Now, step two would be actually adding to the interface itself. So nano launch, and in here on the bottom, I am gonna do space, 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 dash device, USB dash host, comma, and this is would be, remember what we were saying earlier, what the device ID is? So pop this open again, LS USB. And this is what I need. This device over here, right? So I'm gonna kind of move it down to the bottom. And host, no, no, no. Vendor ID equals 0x04f two and then product ID equals 0x b 6 one e So now I have the vendor host and the product ID and that's going to be forwarded over to there. Now in some instances if this still doesn't work you might have to enable permissions on the actual port itself. Let me clear the screen. So what we would need to do is the easiest way would be ls u ls usb and you could see it's bus one device five, right? So we would do chmod sudo chmod a plus w slash device bus USB 001, right? And then here we have a list of devices, which is one, two, three, four, five, and our device is on number five. Hit enter. Now you allow that permission to work as well. You might not need to do this, but if, in case it didn't work, what we were talking about before, you might want to add this little permission in. And that is it. So now if I start up Susumi, actually booting up the system after everything has been installed is not too bad. Uh, from here, you would select boot from Mac OS. And honestly, it's, it almost feels native because it boots up so quick. So right now I'm just, I, I have the eight gigs of RAM in there and I think I switched it back down to four cores just in case, but there we have it. Everything is booted up. We also did the pass through. So I'm going to show you that in a second. It does have audio pass through as well. So there we have my webcam and you could see it passed through my webcam and now I have that working. And uh, another permission that I didn't do, which I should have done, which is the mic. But now we're going to go over to Safari. And let's pop over to YouTube. And let's check out, I don't know, world first massaging chair or something. It plays just fine. Skip and I can fast forward full screen. It runs really well. All right, so that is it guys. Installing Mac OS, USB uh, pass-through. Obviously there's more you could do with it like a GPU pass-through or even pass-through like a display link device where you could actually pop it into a physical monitor. Tons of things you could do with this because it's actually running QEMU in the background. Again, if you are running into issues and all that stuff, I'll leave the GitHub link to this project down in the description below. This way you could go over there and see if it's already been solved or it's something you should ask him to see if there's something that needs to be resolved. I will try to answer any questions you guys may have. So leave it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, 
Pack till it hurts.